Excellent. So welcome to the Metasploit Framework demo meeting. Let's see, we've got some cool stuff to cover. We'll hop right in with some new modules uh, from our very own Debbie Boo. He dropped an exploit module targeting Jenkins dynamic routing. It allows you to skirt around some of the access control logic and use Groovy for payload delivery. It gets you remote code execution on the target. And if you want to see a demo of this, there was a work in progress demo at the last demo meeting. Go find that on YouTube and check that out. Uh, community contributor B. Coles dropped a new module targeting LFinder, EL Finder, which is an open source web UI file manager uh, for vulnerable versions that have PHP connector enabled and exif tran in path, you can get an unauthenticated command injection. And I believe we'll have a demo of this at the end here. We have a first time contributor Zirconius created a module targeting vulnerable Wedman instances. Uh, their upload via post capability leading to remote code execution. Uh, it does require authentication and we'll, I'll have a demo of this in just a few minutes. Community contributor R. Wincy provided a new module targeting BMC's patrol agent, which is part of BMC's TrueSight infrastructure management solution. This module allows you to log in as an unprivileged user to the patrol agent on a target and then escalate your privilege and execute commands. And a bonus, if your target happens to be a Windows domain controller, it means you've got domain admin. Uh, another first time contributor, uh, Mickles, I think is how it's pronounced, put together a module for brute forcing creds on uh, Fortinet SSL VPN target. It's pretty cool. Another first time contributor, uh, Fabio Congo, Cogno provided a module for directory traversal and vulnerable versions of Total JS. And lastly, but not leastly, our very own Jay Robles put together a module targeting vulnerable IBM Big Fix Relay Server that allows you to enumerate organization site and package info, and it does not require authentication. Let's see, things outside of modules that have been going on. Uh, WBU added IRB and PRI Metashell commands for command shells, which allows you to drop an interactive Ruby or PRI debugger uh, prompts on a command shell session. C community contributor Hoodie provided SSL, SSH detection for Ubiquiti's Unify uh, network management controller, and he also added some default creds that are, you might find on some of those uh, systems. Uh, Aceto updated module option strings to support an empty string, which allows users to specify an option equal to an empty string if their situation requires it, still, while still allowing uh, modules that require uh, specific options to keep claiming they require them. Uh, Bcook fixed an auxiliary module regression where backgrounding wasn't happening, so yay backgrounding, yeah, it's working. Unrelated to, to that, Bcook also made it simpler for modules to deregister options provided by the TCP and UDP mixins. And Bcoles added support for detecting OpenSUSE and also for using the is UAC enabled method on Windows 2019 targets. So all those details and more can be found at our weekly Metasploit wrap-up blog post at blog.rapid7.com. And as always, a huge thanks to all of them, all who helped Met make Metasploit better through their contributions. So. Thanks, we do appreciate it. Uh, we also have some research related items. Um, Caitlin, did you wanna talk over this? You want me to, to, I've got the verbiage down here to. Uh, to sure, I can, I can go for it. Um, yeah. So we published a paper or rather a long form um, web content last week on practical exploitation and exposure of Java serialized objects. That was by Rapid7 and Metasploit researchers John Hart and Aaron Soto. Um, the point there was that Aaron, in the course of his work with the Metasploit research team, had noticed a big uptick in the last year or so in um, community exploit PRs for JSO-related vulnerabilities. And he went and did a bunch of research and saw, hey, look, CVEs have also gone up a whole lot in the past year. Let's dig into why that might be and what we can tell the security community about what it means for them, both on the attacker side and the defender side. Um, today, we are going to be releasing the start of a new quarterly series called the Metasploit Development Diaries. And that should be out in the next, oh, it looks like now. <laughs> um, and we're gonna be talking every quarter about how POC or vulnerabilities or PRs that come into Metasploit's field of view turn into modules. So that's the story of how we um, analyze vulnerabilities or any, any one of a, a 
given trove of commodities, <coughs> error messages and exploitable conditions and all sorts of things that live out on the internet and turn them into useful, impactful stuff in Metasploit framework. Um, and this one features a whole bunch of vuln analysis by Wei Chen, Metasploit's lead researcher and exploit developer. So that's gonna be good stuff. I don't know. Also had some input from some community members. Is that right? It did. Thank Mehmet, you for thank Alex. you for reminding me. Yeah. Um, this one features three PRs contributed by community members, and those folks are uh, researcher Mehmet Ince, Metasploit committer Green M, and Alex Gonzalez. Awesome. Thanks to all three of them for their initial analysis and their PRs. Absolutely. Super cool. All right. Thank you, Caitlin. You bet. And with that, I'm going to demonstrate the Webmin RCE module. I have an instance of uh, Webmin installed, a vulnerable instance, uh, inside of a Ubuntu 18.04 VM uh, running locally. And that's just the dashboard. Webmin is a web-based configuration administration tool for Linux and Nix type systems, having been around since 1997. This new module targets vulnerable versions of Webmin and does require authentication. If the user account has access to the upload and download Webmin module, the exploit module will use a post to upload a payload to the Webmin CGI directory and then trigger execution of the payload by sending a request to the associated URI. Uh, so I've got my Metasploit framework. Whoops, I don't know where it went now. Too big, go back. Just mm -hmm. There we go, okay. Um, instance here. Uh, I'm going to use my pre-cooked commands that I already put in there. First, we're going to select the module to use. Uh, for what it's worth, this is just happens to be my VM instance of it running over here. But, and I'm going to tell it the IP address for my target. Uh, I also need to tell it, the, since it does, this one does require authentication, uh, it's nothing too crazy. It's, I used Vagrant to set it up, so username, password, Vagrant. Okay. Go ahead and run it. This is pretty straightforward. Fingers crossed. Slaughter the chickens. And that's it in a nutshell. Uh, a little bit more. Pretty pretty straightforward uh, module there. Um, no muss, no fuss. Looks like it cleans up nicely too. No indication of compromise going persisting on the server. Yeah, I always like it when people hook the delete function just mm -hmm. keeps, keeps your uh, keeps your visibility to a minimum mm -hmm. or from others anyway. <laughs> cool. And that's kind of it, that in a nutshell. Uh, Shelby, you have a demo of the EL Finder? Uh, yep. Yeah. EL Finder is this uh, basically this web file explorer essentially. Um, so the first big thing about this exploit is that uh, it allows you to upload uh, images off unauthenticated. Um, and then once the image is uploaded, you can uh, basically uh, do some kind of operations like rotate the image, crop the image and whatnot. Um, and what it does is whenever it say rotates an image, it sends uh, the, the, the file name uh, and all the information associated with the image to a command line utility called exiftran uh, to perform the actual rotation and everything. Uh, and it, it sends this information, uh, I guess, unsanitized. So what you can do is you can just add some uh, arbitrary code into, say, the file name and get code execution. So I already have my IP. Now let's go ahead and use our target URI and run. And let's see if this actually works, because uh, it is a demo. Fingers crossed. Yeah, right? <laughs> uh, it's being a little slow. Huh. Oh, no. Let's see. Target is not vulnerable. That's interesting. Let's see if we can find out why. Uh, Maybe that's why. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I've been having problems with my VM, but uh, I ran this just prior to the demo and it worked. So. Uh, I know how it goes. I was getting yeah. to rotate error trying to get it working myself. So. Okay. Well. We have we have uh, records of, of it. Well, yeah, you actually you had it working. You you uh, landed the module, verified it, and everything. Yeah. yeah, I have. I mean, you can probably see output up here that it actually worked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll yeah. Like yeah. So okay. here was the previous uh, yeah. run. Yeah, so, so in this yeah. case, it actually uploads the uh, oh, image and then initiates a, uh, a rotate on it, and that's what triggers the. Yeah. Yeah. I was hoping maybe. No, I don't think it's working at all. No. Okay, well, maybe we can get that another time. Excellent.